Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. I had an auto injector and they said, you need to inject in your thigh. That hurt. (laughs) And I would sit there in the bathroom and I would hold that auto injector on my thigh and I would be like, okay, I'm going to do it at the count of three. One, two. And I would be in there for an hour. Hello, and welcome to Getting Clear on Psoriasis. I'm your host, David Brandt, and I've been living with psoriasis for more than 30 years. In this podcast series, we bring you stories about different people's experiences with psoriasis and hear from medical professionals who treat the condition every day. Our goal is to offer tools and resources to help you manage your psoriasis, seek out the best treatment options, and live a more full and productive life. This podcast is for general information purposes only and should not be substituted for medical advice. Please consult your own medical professional with any questions regarding a medical condition, advice, diagnosis, or treatment. As we heard in previous episodes, psoriasis can range from mild to severe, and there are treatment options for each type. Doctors try to match the severity of a patient's condition with the proper treatment. Mild cases are usually treated with topical ointments and creams. But when psoriasis gets worse, dermatologists like Mona Gohara often turn to more complex medications known as biologics. They work on your immune system, tamping down activity to treat the root cause of psoriasis. Some of these medications can be pretty life-changing and miraculous. I've seen people go from body surface area of 80% to zero, and this can happen within months. But you can't just run down to your local pharmacy to pick up your prescription. Biologics are administered either at an infusion site or self-administered via injection by the patient. It's more involved than swallowing a pill with a glass of water, and it can take some getting used to. Self-injection can be very scary or overwhelming at first for patients like Tammy Soretti. I had an auto injector and at the time they were very new and they said, you need to inject in your thigh. That hurt. (laughs) And I would sit there, I would sit in the bathroom and hold that auto injector on my thigh. And I would be like, okay, I'm going to do it at the count of three. One, two. No, I'm not going to do it this time. I have to wait. And I would be in there for an hour just trying to push that button for 10 seconds of a needle. I was terrified in needles. Then I had to go from auto injectors to syringes. Again, I was terrified. I'm like, I can't give myself a shot. Well, as it turns out, I sure can. And it's not just a one and done proposition. Biologics need to be taken on a regular, long-term basis. Here's Dr. Kohara. These can be medications that are injected monthly, every three months, every six months, or sometimes every two weeks. And generally, this is a commitment most of the time for years, if not more. Sometimes it's at least in the minimum a year or two years. So if you really want to get the sustained effect, and sometimes for a lifetime. Another dermatologist, Dr. Joel Gelfan, says despite the apprehension many patients feel about sticking themselves with a needle, They're relieved and delighted when their skin begins to clear up. When patients are starting and maybe a little reluctant because they're worried about doing injection therapy, you know, I think patience is really in order there. I always let my patients know, like, you have other things to try if if you really don't want to go that route, if it's medically appropriate. If they had arthritis, for example, then I may be more pushy as they need to try a biologic. Most of my patients are very satisfied when they move on to a biologic therapy. And most of them will say to me, I wish I started this years earlier. People justifiably are worried about new therapies or things that are by injection that sound scary to the patients. But in reality, these are really safe and highly effective therapies. And so for me, one of the biggest joys I have as a clinician is working with patients who are struggling with their chronic disease, finally getting them on a therapy that's helpful for them, and then seeing them back and follow up and seeing that unique smile they have in their face when they've gotten to a point in their life where after years or decades of struggling with psoriasis, their skin is clear. It's like a miracle. Prescriptions for biologics can only be filled by a specialty pharmacy, and they can become a patient's ally in their treatment journey. 
specialty pharmacies are often very engaged in helping channel the patient to a therapy that is covered by their insurance, as well as educating the patient about how to use the medication, do the injections, things of that nature. Having a good relationship with a specialty pharmacist is really helpful to make sure that when things aren't going exactly to plan, that there's a way of managing things, as well as maintaining access to therapy over time. Dr. Ahmad Shatil Amin says patients usually come into his clinic with a lot of questions about biologics and whether they're safe to take. I think it does require a very, very careful discussion about how effective these medicines are going to be in clearing their psoriasis and also some of the risks involved. These medicines generally are very, very safe. They've been very, very thoroughly tested with large, large number of patients who have been in the clinical trials, who have been followed over time. We have large studies that have followed patients in regular clinics across the United States who have been on these medicines for a number of years that really prove that these medicines overall are quite safe. Dr. Amin says biologics can make the body more prone to infections. So doctors want to know if a patient on a biologic starts to feel sick. This way, they can advise whether the patient should temporarily stop taking the medication while they recover and when they can restart it. Because if they feel sick while they're on one of these medicines, if they have a cold fever that's not going away, we definitely want them to hold their medicine to let us know, and we don't want them to restart until they've gotten over whatever they have. Patients, understandably, also have concerns about side effects and cost. Here's Dr. Gelfan again. We have to go through that with the patient carefully so we understand what the individual side effects may be of any particular therapy available to them. Of course, we need to figure out their insurance company will pay for these treatments. They're uh, often exorbitantly expensive. Some of the treatments we use can cost tens of thousands of dollars per year, and the patients will be on these things long term. So access, insurance approval, co-payments, all things we need to sort out with the patient. And the next thing patients often wonder is, how long do I need to be on this medication? And similar to other chronic diseases, you know, like diabetes or hypertension, for example, they're not curative. And so typically, most patients will be on these medications chronically for years or decades. People with psoriasis are amazed at how the body is able to pump out so many excess skin flakes with such factory-like efficiency. Here's the basic explanation. With psoriasis, the immune system is overactive. It produces too many proteins called cytokines. Those cytokines send signals that cause the skin to regenerate much more quickly than usual, which leads to all the excess flakes. Biologic medications work to rein in those cytokines and block the overproduction of skin cells. But biologic medications, potent though they are, don't always deliver sustained results. So you may have some trial and error to find the right one for you. Vicki Wilkerson has tried various biologics for a few years now. I have been on five different biologics. You start the biologic and they say that it takes six months to deem whether it fails or is treating your psoriasis. So the first biologic I was on, the six months came and went and it had cleared my hands, which I was grateful for, but it had not cleared any other part of me. So then I had to switch and get on to a different biologic. Luckily, the second biologic I was on, it worked well for me. It really did. It worked well for like a year and a half. But then after that year and a half, it started failing. And so then I had to switch and go on to a different biologic. And it's just that same repeat all the way through. Six months being on it, see if it works or if it don't work, then you have to switch and try something else. Dermatologist Dr. Mark Lebwald says another problem is that some physicians are not well-versed in biologic medications and don't prescribe them as often as they should. And they'll treat patients who are covered head to toe with creams and more creams and more creams. And patients sometimes come in carrying hundreds of creams that they were prescribed when a cream simply is not the preferred treatment. Why do the doctors do that? There's several reasons. One of them is psoriasis may not be their area of interest, so they don't bother to study the side effects and the beneficial effects of the new medicines. It's important to find a dermatologist who's experienced using all the different psoriasis treatment options. So ask your doctor 
Are you comfortable prescribing biologics for me? Despite the many variables and hurdles of getting the right psoriasis treatment, Dr. Lebwall feels optimistic about what the future holds. We're at a period of time that's actually starting to be called the golden age of psoriasis because we can clear almost anyone and we can do so in a way that is quite safe and does not impose on the patient's life the way that our old treatments did. In the next episode of Getting Clear on Psoriasis, we talk about the challenges of dealing with the stigma of having psoriasis. I felt like a leper. I should be going around with a bell, ringing, unclean, unclean. Because in the early times, people with psoriasis were lumped in with lepers because they didn't know the difference. That's coming up on Getting Clear on Psoriasis. If you like what you've heard, head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a five-star rating and write a positive review. It will help spread the word to more people who might be in need of support. And if you know someone living with psoriasis, be sure to tell them about this podcast. As always, we welcome your feedback. So send us an email to psoriasis at ghlf.org. Until next time, I'm David Brandt. Thanks so much for listening. This podcast is made possible with support from Walgreens and Alliance RX, Walgreens Prime, sponsors of the Global Healthy Living Foundation. Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network.